Hey guys, and welcome back. Today, we're gonna be doing some RC content. If you don't like RC cars, well, catch you on the next video because this one's an RC car video and I've been really enjoying it. There's a car called the SEX6, which is a six scale crawler. It's the biggest one they've ever made. And it is what got me into RC cars just because it's so big and so realistic. Just like biking, you really kind of don't want to go out and do stuff with your crawlers and your RC cars while it's raining because it's just nasty. And we're here at the rack, which is a multi-purpose area that I have that's gonna be for biking and remote control cars, but things are so wet that you can't really do anything. It's, the crawler works a lot better in dry conditions. We're gonna stay tuned because we'll be doing more and more of the rack and showing this. I got some cones out. Stay tuned for some more stuff going on with the little competitions out here, invites people out. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in to the fact that I have two different SCX6s. I have a trail edition, SCX6 with a bunch of trail parts, and then I have a Vitavon edition with a bunch of Vitavon parts. Each one of them has a little bit something different. One of them is gonna have portal axles, which you see a lot in competition for clearance. And one of them's gonna have a traditional straight axles. And we're gonna talk about the differences of overdrive in both of them today. Cause I kind of want them to match and I'm disappointed with one of them having more overdrive than the other. Cause I use these tr uh, trail trucks as crawlers. So let's get out of this rain and from the crawl spot and uh, let's get, check out these SDX6s. Okay, so one thing that you're gonna notice on this one is that I have cut this front bumper down quite a bit where you mount up. And right here you can see that I've chopped that front rail down quite a bit. And this is what's pushing the body back and kind of gives it this very uh, squatted look right now. What we're gonna have to do is figure out how we're gonna level it up and lower this thing down quite a bit. Um, but let's pop this body off and see what's underneath here. And the back's a little bit different because I've done so many modifications. So I chopped the rear down too. So I'm not really much for the bumpers, but I need some way to attach the body. So popping the bumper in and out to the slides and attaching the body through the bumper was my, my best choice. So as you can see here, that is how my body stays in the back here because I have the rails chopped. It actually gives me a much cleaner approach angle. So we can just kind of start with some of these upgrades that I've got going on here for the Vitavon. I have a Vitavon tray. I've moved my ESC this way. I need to get another receiver box. And then I have a Vitavon motor mount. I've got the Vitavon high clearance links. I've got the skid, uh, the drive shafts, the portal front axles, the steering links. As you can see here, like I showed you outside, there's actually, uh, we've dropped down the links or the shocks that match the links and I think that's really helped. I flipped the shocks here in the front and the rear, drop down weight as possible, but I need to replace some things. I need to replace uh, shock towers, braces. I mean, this thing has so much more room to go down that I feel like I can uh, get some shock towers up front especially. There's something going on here where like, because of the portals, we're hitting this cross member here and it doesn't even, it's not even gone through all the travel uh, in the suspension. So more upgrades in the future, but we're actually going to be running 
uh, the stock system here in ESC. So we're gonna stick with a Spectrum system for the Vitavon build. So these are the batteries I'm gonna use in it, and in the trio I'm gonna use a different one. But what we need to do is do some upgrading, so some steering servos, some tires. Obviously we already have the steady foam in there. So we were just talking about overdrive, and I'm about to show a demonstration showing what overdrive means. And that means the front tires are rotating faster than the rear. And it makes it a lot easier to steer faster, get around features, get around obstacles. So I wanna get this thing to about 25% overdrive. So let's see where we're at with just using the overdrive gears in the front, the 1917 gears. So you see it's about 12%. So if we're looking at this one all the way around back to 12. That means this didn't quite make it. So we wanna make sure we want that thing to be at the quarter mark here to be 25%, just to make it simple. Think about the full rotation. So what are we gonna need to get this, this wheel off? We are gonna need a uh, 10 mil, and then we're gonna need our drill here, so it's pretty easy access. And it's gonna be a 2.5 that's in there. So pretty easy to get those out. This pops off and then boom, look at that. The other gear is actually on the back of here. And these are gonna be the 1818s. And this is how easy it is to put the overdrive or underdrive into uh, your portal axles, which is a, a huge benefit uh, with this versus having to go into the pumpkin for it. Got these sent in from Exo Caged RC. Exo Caged RC. He is gonna be my Vitavon dealer. He's out of Florida. That's gonna be the 19. There's a 17. So I think we're gonna put the 17 on top and see how that goes real quick. And this is how easy it is to install it. Pull this one out, which is the 18. We're gonna go ahead and put that small one in here. So this would be 17. So we're gonna take the 17 and just plop it on top. Okay, and look at that. There's the other one right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and grab that, pop that off, super simple. 19 right here. We're just gonna slide it right on that spindle. Same on both sides, you can't really mess that up. One-handed shenanigans, you know, you just gotta kinda push, shove, and twist. So now, it's this simple. So, you see these bolts? They're all ungreased. I need to grease these and Loctite these. Oh, what is this, Reefs RC? Hmm. I wonder if they're gonna come into play in the rest of the series. Um, but let's just put a little bit of lube on there. Let that grind with each other. And we'll put a little on the bottom of this one. I'd rather over grease than under grease. And then for these nuts down here, I don't think we're gonna do it here. We're just gonna go ahead and dab ourselves a little bit of Loctite on each one of those. And because these are nice hardened steel axles and gears, I don't think I'll ever have to take these off again. So uh, let's get it back together. So like I said, we're just gonna pop two screws in there for safety purposes. We should be able to just slide this on. We'll get it lined just about up where you need it. There's no pressure on any of the wheels or tires. We're gonna say that center. I've actually made a little reach through here to, where I can turn this thing on. Um, I also run my truck at 7.4, so it's a little louder than it should be. But here we are, and let's see what happens here. Pretty on the money there. We wanted 25%, I think we officially got that 25%. Love it, love it, love it. I'm so excited to take this thing out. And before I forget, you really wanna know, is how much does the Vitavon rig weigh? So we have a reference point of what we're starting with. So there she is up on the scale in all of her beauty. And might 24.5 for the Vitavon SCX6 build so far. So now we're gonna move on to the trio rig. And I've got a lot more upgrades or I have like different upgrades in different ways on it where I have a lot of structural upgrades on the other one. This one I have, I'll just show you, but we're gonna start off so you see on the same track so you can see how we've equalized the overdrive uh, in both trucks, because I feel like it's so important. It's, it's ridiculously important to have that overdrive if you're gonna use the rig for crawling. 
So one of the things I have is I use the DX5 controller. So the other one is Arthur for Vitavon, and I'm gonna do a model select change. And we're gonna go down to Wendy Wang for the Trill truck. Um, this one has the power button right underneath, and we're gonna show you why the power button being underneath there is actually problematic. We're actually gonna have to switch that and see what you guys think. We're gonna go ahead and reach around in here. Get that power button from up under here in the stock position. So it's like we had some trouble um, turning this thing on with the power switcher there. It's because we're missing a battery and got something really cool for you guys. We need to find batteries. So we were running the Spectrum batteries and system in there. But later on, we're going to have some upgrades for this one. So we're going to need some different size batteries to go in here. So this is the upgrades bin. I don't want to spoil everything that's going to happen in the series. But there's a lot of stuff going in here. Um, we've got some swampers that are going to be for the Vitavon build. Uh, what is this? A uh, uh, Reefs RC catalog? Maybe we've got some Reefs RC parts. But what were we looking for? We were looking for, uh, oh, oh yeah, we need some batteries. So where would those be at? Okay, so let's get these shocks out of the way. Oh, we don't need that. None of those. What is this? Uh, Piston shims, we got extra axles. Oh, what do we got in here? Oh, what is this? Some steering links. Oh, I think this is probably what we're oh is that a oh what is was that a max axle mounted servo, some bumpers, new ESC, some brass fittings, some more ESCs. Oh, what's that big thing down there? Oh, what is, oh I don't know. What's in there? Oh, I think this is what we're looking for, is this right here. That's right, that's right. These are a Vonix uh, 5200 3S ADC batteries because I think we're going to do a motor and ESC upgrade in here. But first things first, we need to get these things charged. Those these out. What do we got here? Boom. Nice, clean, hard cases. Um, I ordered these already with the IC5. Nice, tight fit there. These are 3S, so I'm going to put you in the 3S spot. Lithium battery, start. So we are gonna have a uh, splitter put here. So this is gonna be for more run time. So I'm gonna have a 3S ADC over here and have another 3S ADC over here. We're gonna go ahead and connect these up. So now that we're connected up, you can see this is for more run time. Label things so you don't get it wrong so you don't burn anything up. But remember, these are 3S for a reason because we're gonna end up using this right here is for the series. So we're gonna be able to run 6S on this thing. So that's really exciting, but that's gonna be further on in the series about why we're gonna use this. Anybody have any idea of what motor and ESC we're gonna use if we switch to 6S? Because the stock spectrum, stock spectrum system is only gonna allow you to go up to 4S, and I wanna change that. So there's a lot of overlapping problems. You might've seen it in the box earlier. But let's go over some of these other upgrades real quick. So our only major upgrade on this unit is going to be, I've uh, bucked out these bracings here. You see this right here? Those are cut out so I can get a lot more flex down in there. But I can pull this thing, it's got some pressure on it, but it goes all the way up to the edge there. So I got those taken out there. Still off the mouse because I might end up moving that ESC or mounting a new one back here. So now that we got this thing flipped over, I've actually put a basic skid plate underneath here and it really protects the edge of these links. If you guys haven't thought about this, how smooth this is. And with that skid plate, you're just down another three millimeters, but it allows it to slide a little better. I know people say the plastic slides better, but I'd rather have a smooth point right there so it doesn't get caught up on anything. I might be able to grind these down or smooth them out a little bit better, but Again, the same mods is that I've go ahead and took the shock down to the link position. Um, I've got the overdrive gears up front. What else have I done? I've got the swampers on here. We also have these beautiful wheels. Really nice. I think it really added to the appeal from the outside as well as weight out there. And it real metal everywhere. So nothing's stripping out. So I haven't had any issue. And, and of course, inside of those, Every one of my wheels and stuff is my SETI foam. You can check these out online, description down below. 50 bucks for a set, shipped right out of North Carolina. If you have an SCX6, you need to do 
an upgrade on the foams. If you get the Swampers, if you don't get the Steady Foams, use your stock black foams. And I mean, I'm so into this, look, like right here. So this is what came in your Swampers, is this little petty white stuff. These black ones that come in your stock BF Goodridges are, are better than what comes in the Swampers for sure. And I've done a lot of testing. Like, look, look at all the foam down there. I mean, it's on my walls, I'm shipping it. Like, I'm not, I'm not selling you on anything in particular, but what I am selling you on is the fact that the Swamper stock foams stink. Um, the stock ones from the BF Goodridge that you already have are better than the stock ones. You know, step up from that. Um, these are 50 bucks and these are a steady foam, never break down guarantee. If you don't like them, I'll just refund your money. But also uh, Three Brothers Annie Foams is probably the next best choice. Uh, they're a hundred bucks, these are 50 bucks. Great product. Uh, I actually, if you see, you might've seen that Three Brothers RC back in there. So I have a bunch of their products anyways. Um, I didn't do any alterations to the bumpers yet. This is all plastic. I wanna change some of these braces. Um, one of the things here is the caster. The caster angle is really important. Um, that's the, the three link system here. You actually gonna adjust this inside of here and mount it where you want and then pull it out more. This gives it more angle when I turn, the wheel tucks in more. So when I'm side hilling, this thing gets flat and I have more traction while I'm turning, even if it's pinched here. So it's gonna roll the axle forward and backwards. So I get as much of the casters as I can in there. Um, what I like about the portals on the other one is that I'm not gonna have this hitting issue anymore if I put swampers on it. Um, so I'm digging pretty deep in there as far as that goes. Like that's not even touching yet. So, uh, and I got a stock servo in here. Uh, you guys saw there were servos down there. What's really interesting about this is after I've lowered and done stuff, and I'm looking at why this isn't coming down all the way. So this is hitting this right here, just that. What's really happening, maybe you can see it from this angle, um, right there, okay? So if you look at this, this is actually stopping it from compressing more is actually the, is hitting this. So it's this piece so the pan hard bar, right, is actually making contact with the servo tray. You see right there, it actually hits it. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to adjust that to get that out of the way because it's actually limiting, if you look at my shock right here, it's limiting how much I can go down because it's hitting. So what do you guys think is gonna change that? Should I go ahead and change the shock towers? Um, this steering link, maybe these rod ends, but I have to do something for that because this truck can be way more flexible. Like I'm losing out on travel right there. So what do you guys think I should do? Should I change steering links? Should I try to alt, should I try to change um, this piece right here and shave it down and fill it in? Because that's what I've really been thinking that I'm gonna do is take this piece out, shave it down and have more clearance. Because my Vitavon one allows for that to be completely flat where this is raised. As you can see, let me get back in here at an angle. If you can see through here, if you can see through here, um, this is all raised. It doesn't need to be actually raised. It's really just this part over here is raised and it's hitting. You can see right there where my finger's at? Boom. It's stopping and look at right there at my travel and my shock. Like it's, it's limiting. So I need to get down that next little bit. Um, Seems kind of small and petty, but I mean, I also shaved out the backs of these. So you can see down here, I'm right on top of that brace in there. So this is maximized clearance as possible is the key. Um, still stock shafts, stock links. Um. Okay, now that we've got that charged, uh, see about this overdrive. Let's say it's like 20, 20 to 25, maybe a little less than what we have in the, uh, ooh, this is only like 20%. And now in the Vitavon, I actually have 25. Look at that, it's not quite lined up. Maybe we go in reverse. Just go all the way back on. Locks them right in. Okay. 
Yeah, so it was pretty close though, but overdrive is a definite net stick. These things are so big. Hold these things in place, you really need to have that overdrive happening. Okay, so we gotta get back to the scale here. So we're gonna turn the scale on. Boom, zero it out, and let's grab this big, let's grab this big old pig here. Vitavon, when I got to rest, I'm saying 25.4. 25.4 it is. So, already coming in, but I bet once we add the tires to the other one, or maybe we'll keep them stock. What do you guys want to do? But, 25.4, trail build. Big shout out to Ovonix for the batteries that were the sponsored piece from this video. Uh, great work with you. I've actually got a bunch of their batteries, and I think throughout the series, we've got to get to a bigger battery, and I don't want to carry two. So you might see some success batteries from Ovonix in the mix there. Another thing is we went ahead and got both of the trucks uh, performance-wise at the same par, I think, because they both have the about the same overdrive. And I was driving one with, I was driving the Trio with, you know, a little less or a little over, right at 20% overdrive. And it was remarkably different how it drove as far as how the handling was. And it's uh, pulling the back versus pushing. So having those overdrive into the Vitavon car, I think really leveled up the playing field as far as mechanically what's happening in that you know the overdrive factor where it's pulling up stuff rather than like ramming the back tires into it as you saw in the basket there a lot of upgrades left to do in our next episode we're going to go out to the rack and we are going to see who performs where they perform and what we can do differently because i really want to lower down that bit of on rig because uh, it's just so high up the other rig, the trail one, or both of them, I think we need shock towers in both of them. I have some other links, some steering links I can add. What other stuff? I've got um, some winches, some st steering servos, uh, new motors, ESCs. What else do I have in there? Uh, bumpers. Um, yeah, so I'm really stoked about the series. Down below, make sure in the comments to let me know which upgrade you're looking forward to or which one's your favorite. Do you like the Vitavon with the portals or do you like the straight axles that are more to scale for the Jeep? Um, and make sure you're out there crawling, having a good time with the guys. Go build something, go do something. I'm really stoked I found this hobby of RC because it gives me something to do and tinker with while I'm at the house when other times I might be stuck in the house doing a whole lot of nothing. Now I have something to do. So hey to all you other RC fans out there. And if you're not into RC, thanks for watching the video up to this point. And uh, we'll have some biking content coming soon for you. Don't forget to subscribe.